boys it feels very good being right because look at this look at this oh look at this i feel like it was a little too obvious though but like there were some people that didn't think this was going to happen and i was like dude they didn't have karen in the pre-release summoning campaign they didn't have her go on double raid up with Bazette, but they gave her a raid up like it seemed pretty obvious they were saving her for part two of this event which unfortunately when it comes to uh fgo and you know part one and two of an event is really just a banner uh you know kind of sad because dokkan's going through their anniversary right now and when they drop a part two it drops like a mountain of more content to go through and then you know they drop part three and you get more stuff so i don't know maybe we'll see that for more um uh, fgo in the future that maybe their like parts one and two will be uh less banner phased but that seems to be the entire thing that they're going through so i guess we'll kind of briefly go over that in today's video and you know maybe i might vent a little bit about on mind you not having any buffs or anything because i still think it's really dumb that they haven't done anything with on mind you but if you enjoy daily fgo content i stream every day or uh, not stream but upload every day uh please leave a like on the video subscribe to the channel all that good stuff I do stream every weekday over my Twitch. I think that's what I was thinking about. But yeah, I stream every weekday over my Twitch. I mean, usually every weekday, but you know, school does have me busy sometimes. So you can peep that in the description down below. Click that join button to get exclusive channel member content. And if you want to support the channel in a free way, I'm affiliated with LD Emulator and Loot Cakes by all means. Now, looking back at this, um, should you summon for Karen? Kinda depends. Already got some questions on Discord about this and I had like one person peep my Twitter DMs, which is actually kind of funny because I was like the first time someone's ever done that. But um, should you summon for Karen? It's a kind of a complicated question because if you have Scotty, but let's say you don't have someone like Dante or Lancelot, I think she's a really good option for your quick looping servant. But if you have someone like Lancelot, then the question is, well, what NP level is he? Because let's come over here. And look at this like damage chart excuse me uh if you look at this and you're like lancelot that you have is like np1 it might still be worth to go ahead and summon for karen because bruh like <laughs> lancelot really doesn't do this uh thing that we like to call damage until he's like np4 np5 right this is when he actually finally becomes pretty good with his um his damage and farming ability but if you don't have him that high you can definitely be a bit wonky to use whereas karen after her buff i mean look at this that's really strong aoe damage is just right off the rip without any of these buffs over here right so i think she has a very good value if you have like let's say like a weaker lancelot or if you come over look at dante's like dante's i know people the meme is like if you get him an np1 but his np1 damage is pretty fine it's comparable to karen's and he farms a bit better because of the np gain buff so it's like kind of depends on what you have in your box she can also like stall bosses because of all of her like just nonsense that she has in her kit and is just quite literally like an np generation factory because i mean look dude she gens np here she gens np here she gens np here like she just gens np all over the place and so it's more like do you do you have scotty and can you take advantage of karen if not then it kind of becomes a personal preference thing like maybe if you don't have scotty you're gonna summon for karen because you think either scotty's going to get another rate up in a few months and it's almost like preparing your box to get that scotty right if that makes sense or you may believe that we're going to be getting a new like really good quick support type servant on the level of castoria and um tamamovich over here right maybe you think that's gonna happen and you want to go ahead and snag yourself a really strong quick aoe servant that might also be fine it's just i don't know like when it comes to jp i tend to not recommend people to just summon for characters as like preparation it's more like either just summon for the characters because you like them right like when morgan came out i was gonna summon for her regardless nikki came out summon for her regardless because those are just servants that i like um it's kind of hard to plan things out for jp meta unless you have someone that is like blatantly a meta defining servant like say castoria or tamamovich where they blatantly reshape how the meta goes and they change like an entire card type right like making 
Arts and Buster respectively, just insanely more viable. So aside from that, it's just like, JP should be a game where like, you do try to summon for really good servants, but you'd also just kind of summon for the servants you like, because it's kind of hard to predict what they're gonna put out next. Like I can only, I can only predict so much. Like I was like, hey, Bazette's probably gonna be really broken or whatever Valentine servant they put out, just given their track record, but that's more of just an obvious prediction, right? Like it's pretty obvious to say like, oh, she'll probably be really good. And yeah, like, but good in what way? Did, did anybody predict that she was gonna be a counter servant? I don't think anybody could have predicted that, right? So it's just like, JP's always just throwing wild curveballs out at us and it's it's hard to really predict what they're going to be doing so if you like Karen which is understandable I mean Karen's pretty adorable if you like her you can go ahead and summon for her she's not bad it's just you want to have Scotty or some new hypothetical weird quick support type servant um that's going to be like on the level of Castoria or uh Koyanskaya you're gonna really need someone like that to really bring out her full power because otherwise she's just kind of a solid servant it's just that scotty provides everything that karen is lacking like most notably she's giving her like the big crit damage which she doesn't have that's one major thing and she's also giving her the big quick buff that she's also lacking so this is like kind of evaluate your box and then decide as to whether or not you're gonna summon or not i know that me personally over on JP, I'm gonna be skipping this banner just because it, it kinda seems like bait, if that makes sense, because they put out Bazette. Bazette's really crazy. I definitely think Bazette is better than Karen is, right? And so it feels like you put out the stronger unit on part one, then part two comes out, and you you know you bring back the one from last year, you give her a buff, and you hope people summon for her. And I'm just like, yeah, that probably means something crazy is right around the corner because I think the next major banner is going to be what the White Day banner, the uh, the Caldea Boys. That could definitely be very interesting. No idea who they're going to do for that one. Maybe you'll get like Grand Berserker uh, Sun Wukong or something, right? Like maybe that's going to be who that is. So just kind of holding the Saint Quartz close to the chest, you know, just being a little cautious about this. I'm personally not going to be summoning, but. If you do decide to summon, she's definitely well worth it. It's just the main general point I'm trying to get across here. Um, the other thing that I'm just a little salty about is, look at this. Nothing comes with it. It's just it's like, all right, here's part two of the event. Here's Karen. Here's some CEs, which, I mean, come on, bro. Like, look at the, I mean, these CEs are adorable. Like, I'll give them that. These, these are really cute. I'll give them that. And then, whew, okay, semi Rami. So let's see what's going on there. But like, aside from that, aside from Coomer bait, um, with these two, I mean, I don't know what's going on over here. Um, I could not care less about the Lollicon CE, but these two based. Okay. This one, uh, don't care. Right. But aside from that, where's, where's on remind you, bro? Like where's the on remind you, uh, buffs, man. Because for people that don't know, the reason I'm like, I still keep harping on it is one, Angermine you sucks, right, in game. He's absolutely atrocious, which doesn't make sense because this is the guy that is merged with the Grail and is like pretty much a lot of the reason why most of the stuff in Fate gets messed up. It's like Kiritugu's wish, or he doesn't, he doesn't even get to make his wish in Fate Zero, right? Because he gets into the Grail and Angermine you's like, like just being some weird genie right where he's like i'll grant you your wish but only in a really messed up way you know he's like the ultimate antagonist right as he's possessed the ground i mean even in like you look at like heaven's feel and stuff too where like uh kira and all of them are just like we gotta help out this boy on remind you out here he's the one possessing and polluting the grail and you know shiro and all of them are inadvertently fighting against that right because he's corrupted the grail and then in hollow ataraxia the series that bazette is from i mean angermine is the whole reason she's not you know dead right for lack of a better term because if you don't know here's a little bit of fate lore so you know bazette summons coup right kirei comes jack's coup right you know steals coup from bazette bazette and coup like try to fight each other they have like a mutual explode each other because they try to throw gable and uh, fraggle rock at each other and those are both like 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 gay bull can't miss but fraggle rock also just like seals NPs and obliterates people so kind of created a weird thing in that part of the story but then Bazette basically 
goes into like what's just called a magic coma and then Angermine's like you know what you don't have to die I'm gonna be good and Angermine like takes her through like all of hollow ataraxia and basically you know saves her life right that's the basic gist of it I know somebody who's you know a super fate lore stand is gonna be like well actually that's not the exact way that happened i don't care all right just push that person to the side okay that's generally what happened he's very important for bizet it'd be kind of like imagine if we were playing a dragon ball game right and you had a goku unit come out and then it's like oh this goku unit he's gonna make vegeto and then but vegeta's nowhere on the unit right like it wasn't a goku and vegeta unit it was just a goku unit that somehow became vegeta it's like bro where is the other piece the other piece that's equally as important right it's like where did you, where is it going on man so it's like i don't know i'm just a little frustrated and need to vent on that part you know because he's, he's like such an important character right especially in the context of bazet right like if the, if this was i don't even know like if this was a fate stay night celebration i don't really care about anger mind you he's probably not gonna get brought up there but it's like bazet is specifically her main thing is hollow ataraxia like that's that's her stuff. And Anger Mind You is not only really important in Hollow Ataraxia, but he's also really important for Bizet specifically. So no idea what's going on here. DW, give me the Anger Mind You buffs. I'm not having it anymore. This, this is no longer a bargaining. This is now a demand. You'll give me the buffs. Just look, you showed us what you could do with Bizet and how she can counter. Just give that to Anger Mind You, okay? Just give him Anger Mind You counters. And let him just pop off right like let him be good because if you're gonna summon on the friend point gotcha for a servant that is like more rare than some five stars right like he's insanely hard to get like can i not have a limp biscuit for <laughs> my actual servant can i can i actually have someone that's usable please but i don't know let me know that in the comments down below is, is anybody else just kind of like perplexed that anger mine didn't have anything to do with this because it's weird it's like a fate stay night celebration with no archer right or it's like a fate apocrypha celebration with no siegfried right like they're very important servants for those stories right like it's very weird if they're not present at all and having some representation because there's not even like what there's not even a um a ce that has anger mind you in it i don't think yeah, i'm like i don't even think they were like hey new ce it has angry mango in it it's like bro I don't where is the banner there it is i was like bro i'm going full boomer how do i navigate this like look these are some pretty banging ce's but they ain't longer mine so i'm like bro where where's the guy where's the dude what what, what have you done with him hmm? bro you turn into a celtic man lady you fuse the war god the celtic guy where's where's angry mango i don't know but i'm gonna go be frustrated somewhere else <laughs> i'll go ahead and end the video here um, you guys have yourselves a nice day. Let me know all that stuff in the comments down below, and I'm gone. Peace, late, guys.